everybody, 6-Speed Dakota here. Today's project in the garage is we're going to be doing the rear brakes on a 2003 Honda CRV. This is the same one I did the diff and tranny fluid that has been so popular lately, actually. So thank you guys. You guys have been have been making me popular. So uh, yeah, I've never really been popular, so I don't know how it feels. Started my guess. Anyhow, all that glory, glory aside. What you'll need for this job, you're going to need a set of brake rotors if your rotors are worn out. You're going to need a new set of brake pads. And make sure you get a good set of brake pads that come with the proper clips. And tools you're going to need, you're, you're going to need a 3 8 ratchet for sure. You're going to need some silicone brake lubricant, some anti-seize. And I've used my impact swivel sockets right there. But you'll basically need a generic set of hand tools, and I highly recommend having a big bad air compressor. Alright, so first step I've already done is I've jacked it up and got the wheels off. So, there's my big jack right there, and I got it sitting on jack stands. You never want to leave it sitting on the jack. So, I also have my number one most important thing, safety glasses and gloves. So, next step what we're going to do is I'm going to put you right down right there. Now, the brakes on this side aren't too bad, but the brakes on the other side are really worn out. So I'm concerned that we might have to do a caliper. But, I guess we'll have to wait and see. First thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to pull the caliper off. Oh, there's my gun. Safety glass is a must. There are two bolts back here. And these guys don't even fit. Okay, so we got a nice view of the caliper right now. So this bolt here is a 12 millimeter. Oh, I gotta grab my ratchet. Before you take one completely out, be sure to loosen the other because the caliper will want to walk outward that way. So in order to get the rotor off, which we're going to have to do, we're going to take this big caliper mounting bracket off. So, But the first step still is to get the caliper off. Alright, so next you can pull your brake pads off, we're going to have to do a little bit of work to this mounting bracket to clean it up. Alright, now, you don't want to let the caliper hang by the hose. So, this is a 9 sixteenths, whatever that equivalent is in metric, I'm not sure. I believe it's 14 or 15 millimeters. And now I'm wearing safety glasses and I got my gun in reverse. Once again, get the other one off before you pull both bolts completely out. There's the mounting bracket, just comes right off. Okay, so now unfortunately we have to get these screws off at the front of the rotor. That one there and that one there. And somebody has been in here before because look how buggered that one is, especially that one. This might be a fun job. Alright, so I do have an impact driver. But you see how nice and buggered up that is. I'm trying not to make it buggered up any more than it is. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take a little ball peen hammer, and I'm just going to tap around it. And what that should do is loosen it. 
just enough. So I'm going to take my snap-on screwdriver, which is precision machined, and all I have to do is unscrew it. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. In this case, I guess I got lucky. Alright. So, so I get this other screw out. I don't really like the way that they do that. But, I guess it is a good idea. So, now what we do is we slide the rotor off. This might be a bit of a fight. Well, it appears that the parking brake is stuck. Okay, so if your parking brake is stuck on like mine is, or not stuck on, but preventing the shoes from coming off, or the brake from coming off, there we go. Just get a pry bar, put it right in behind here, I guess, and Try. Well, you can see that with that light in the way. So in between the caliper mounting bracket and the back of the rotor, and pry. So this is what the rotor looks like. So this big tall hat here is actually like a drum. And these guys here are like drum brake shoes. Now they're not very thick because they don't usually wear. They're just designed to hold the thing in place. This is the better design. I really like this design of caliper, or uh, of, uh, of emergency brake. It tends to hold better on a bigger vehicle. And uh, with four wheel disc brakes becoming more prominent nowadays, this is altogether just a better design. Okay, now we got the rotor off. What we're going to do is we're gonna push that piston back in. Now, I thought it was a screw caliper, but I was wrong, which is great, because now all I really need to push the caliper back is a simple clamp. So here's our caliper, now all we need to suck this piston back in is just an ordinary C-clamp. So, So I'm going to unscrew my clamp as much as I possibly can so I can fit that guy in there just like that. Hopefully this goes back in. Oh, yes it is. Okay. There's what my setup looks like. There's the clamp, there's the caliper. And all I'm doing is I'm slowly turning this thing in and you can see the piston retracting back again. Now if this caliper has evidence of leakage, if you peel back the boot and it's leaking, you may as well just replace it because you can't let that go out on the road. That's dangerous. So we're going to press the caliper back in until it bottoms out. And no more. You don't have to really force this thing in there. Okay, there we go. Now the next step, I'm going to pull this clip out of here. Because the new kit comes with them. So, in order to do that, I need a screwdriver. And we're going to pry that piece back and just basically push it through. Okay, so here's the caliper. Here's the top of it. I got my little screwdriver here. We're afraid to bend it a little bit. I mean, there it is right there. And now, what we need to do is we're going to take the caliper mounting bracket. We're going to clean it up as well. First thing that's got to go are this clip here. Same thing. Take a screwdriver, pry it out. There's one on the opposite side. This provides a smooth sliding surface for the uh, the pads to slide on. There we go. 
and it went flying off. Oh, there it is. Alrighty. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up this caliper mounting bracket. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up the caliper mounting bracket. So, I'm gonna put this in my trusty vise. We're not gonna clamp it too, too tight. Okay. I'm gonna take a wire brush, and clean the surface of where those little clips hold on to. It's pretty rusty. This car came from Squamish, BC. Originally, before the owner, current owners bought it. So that's up close to by Whistler where the Olympics were. And it's kind of salty up there. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to try to pull this boot back at the same time as I pull the slider out. There's a the slider right there. Now, take my shop rag and clean it off. Now, if you look at it and you notice any kind of rust or pitting on it, it's time to clean it up with a wire wheel, but since this one looks absolutely perfect, we're going to lube it up. This is where we take some slide grease, and we apply it. Oops, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. We apply it all over the slide like that. And then I prefer to put a little bit into the hole right there. And there we go. We make sure that slides smoothly, which it does. So I'm thinking that the other side, because the brakes are so worn down, that the sliders are actually stuck. Come on. So in this case, this rubber boot popped off, but that's not really a big deal. There we go. Just going to pop it back in that hole. There we go. Same thing applies. This one looks a little bit dirty, but as soon as I wipe it off, it's nice and clean again. There's a little bit of pitting on it. Right there. I don't know if you can see that. A little bit of surface corrosion. So I'll have to clean it up with a wire brush. Basically, the pitting is caused by... the thing running at a lubrication dry the lubrication drying up and then water gets in there and rusts it out there we go just a little bit of surface rust nothing major same thing I'm gonna put a little bit of slide grease to this guy and I'm gonna squeeze a little bit you know that bellows there Make sure you don't mix up these things from side to side either because they can be side specific. So now what we're going to do, we we'll take our package of clips, open it, and we're going to get these little guys out. Now. All these guys do is they just basically get in there and they snap in like this. This is the back side and this goes underneath the caliper mounting bracket. And that's what holds it in. And you hear that little click and it just pops right in. So how it's supposed to sit. It's really quite simple. Now, if I grab another one. There we go. You just basically sit it on there. You don't want to put any lubricant on the back side of this. Because that could cause... That, that'll just make a mess. You can if you want, but... It's not really necessary. I'm having trouble clicking this thing in, but basically these two bottom pieces sit against that lower lip, and this guy just clicks into that little hole. 
So, now that we're done installing these things, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, next step, we're going to get a little bit of anti-seize. We're going to put it on the friction points, which is at the bottom. And on the side here. Now all these things do is they keep a little bit of tension on the brake pad. To keep them from vibrating. Same thing with that one we took out of the caliper. So, you can choose to clean up the entire bracket if you want. I don't find it really necessary, but if you like to make your brakes look good, be my guest. So now that that's done, we're going to clean up the area around the... We're going to clean up the caliper first, and then we're going to clean up the parking brake area. Alright, so now that we've got the mounting bracket ready, we're going to take the caliper, we're going to clean... We're going to clean in and around the piston here, right at the front of it, and on the backs of these guys here where it contacts the pad. That'll ensure good contact and minimal squealing, or no squealing hopefully. And then right here on top where that clip rides, we're going to clean that guy out too. Won't take very long. And then underneath here. You can see some shiny spots usually. I'm going to clean those guys up because that's also where the clip rides. Okay, now we're going to install the clip. Here it is here. It's a little bit tricky, but I'm going to feed it in from underneath. I can't see anything with this damn trouble light in my face. screwdriver, pull it as hard back, jeez this is tricky, There we go. You just kind of got to wrestle the thing into place. There we go. And she's in. That was only a little bit of a fight. So now, oh, the camera would focus. What we're going to do, we're going to take our wire brush and just kind of clean up and around here. the surface of the hub off. There we go. Make sure it's nice and clean. You know, some people choose to, to go overboard. It's not really necessary because this doesn't really do any wearing. Well, hopefully it doesn't do any wearing. Unless you got a problem. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the new rotor on. Okay, so now you see that little yellow goopy stuff there? That's actually a rust inhibitor. So in order to get good contact, we got to remove that from this side, this side, and from the e-brake surface. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some lacquer thinner. Brake cleaner works fine. I'm gonna soak a rag in it. You can see it remove all that. You don't really need to do it everywhere, but I'll do it a little bit on the surface to gain good contact as well. And you do it on the other side too, but one little thing I forgot to mention, this little rubber plug. I'm not sure what it's for. So if somebody could enlighten me, that would be great. But, don't want to forget it, whatever it is. So, that little recessed hole right there, all it does is you take a screwdriver from the back side and pop it out. And all you have to do is uh, pop it back in. Sort of. Uh, it looks like she's going to need the old screwdriver, but you get the point. 
Okay, if I can hold the camera steady. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of anti-seize. Oops, put our fingers. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put it around the, there we go. Around the edge of this. Just a little bit, not too much. You can also put some oops, on the inside of the rotor here. Probably can't see that, but right here. Anyhow, I'm try I've tried. <laughs> and now once you've done that, give one final give the rotor one final wipe off. Now we're gonna sit this guy back in there. But make sure that you line up the screw holes to which ones they go in. And this guy actually, for some reason, there we go. Doesn't want to go on there. There we go. Yeah. Shouldn't be tight in any way, shape, or form. That e-brake shouldn't drag excessively. Since we marked this all up, we've got to clean it all off again. That's not a big deal. Now we've got the rotor on. There you take the two rotor screws. These little dudes right here. My LCD, oops, happens to be upside down right now for some strange reason. There we go. Okay. Oops. I'll try to put that guy right there. Okay, so this little dude right here, put a little bit of never seize on it, or any C, sorry. And I'm just going to install it. It's easier if I hold the light like this. Oops, that's not the one. That's the one right there. It would actually. So, what we'll do is we'll take our itty bitty little screw here. Oops. I don't recommend impact driving these guys back in if you had to impact drive them out. All you have to do is just snug them up. All they do is they hold the rotor on level so that you can easily install the brake caliper and mounting bracket. Which is kind of a nice feature, but they're kind of a pain to get out. I've seen ones that don't even have them on there anymore, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so now we are going to move on to the caliper and mounting bracket. So Got our cleaned up caliper mounting bracket. Okay, here it is. We want to take the two large bolts, of course after they've been cleaned off, unlike everything else, we're going to apply some anti-seize to the threads. Probably can't see that this trouble light is being a pain in the ass. This will make these easier to come off the next time. We install the mounting bracket. Now we're going to put the gun in forward, and I'm just going to snug them up. Move the caliper out of the way. There we go. And now, where the hell am I? 
there a minute. I take my ratchet. And snug them up. These have to be really tight, not like so because this thing, oops, this thing supports the brakes, so you have to make sure that that's fairly tight. So now we're going to install the brake pads. All right, now another step that people do that that that, all, that I do that a lot of people don't is when I used to work for Honda, all the brake pads came with this little packet of goop in it, and this is anti-squeal compound. So, and a lot of people just threw them out. So, I like the stuff. It's it's good stuff. So, take some anti squeal compound and apply it liberally to the back of the pad. Stuff's pretty thick, but this will prevent the pad from whoops. This will prevent the pad from vibrating in there, because that's what that squeal noise is usually when you when your brakes aren't worn out, but they squeal. So that pad actually shudders inside there. So whoops. Paint is peeling off the shim. There we go. So we're just going to cover the shim in a liberal coat of it. And then we're going to install the pads. Do it to both sides, remember. Alrighty. Oh, here goes my vacuum. <laughs> okay, so now what we're going to do is just for just for fun, I'm going to apply a little bit of anti seize to the sides and the, these a little bit here on the pads just for extra wear resistance. So now remember the pad with the squealer goes on the inside. All we have to do oops there just snaps right in. There are no retaining clips on this one that hold it in. Unlike Chevy's, usually they have, the older ones anyway, have a retaining clip that holds the pad into the caliper. But that one goes on completely differently. Oops. Okay. That's anti seize on this side pad. Start from the top push down and it snaps right in. So now, we're going to take the caliper, we're going to sit it over top. Now you may have to push the, oh, you may have to push the, uh, the sliders back in. Oops. You may have to push these little sliders here in to actually be able to get the pad in. Now I'm going to take a little never seize or anti seize and put them on the on the bolt threads. Now because of that little clip it's going to want to spring back that, that top clip in the caliper so make sure you put a little bit of downward pressure on it to be able to sit in properly. Now just like that. See how this caliper jumps up and down? That's the way it should be. The idea is that it's it's pushing the brake pads down in towards the wheel so that it so that they don't come uh, so that they don't shake inside there. Now if you find though this guy's spinning as you're tightening it up, you may have to get a wrench to hold it on. that that's tight. Uh, 
and that guy's tight there too. So now, we're gonna go, top caliper mounting bracket is tight, or bottom caliper to bracket is tight, then top caliper mounting bracket to, to frame is tight, bottom caliper mounting bracket is tight, and rotor screw one, rotor screw two is tight. Always double check, especially with brakes. Because if you drive off one of those bolts is loose, you could lose brakes altogether, which is really, really bad. So, now that we got the brakes looking like they should again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside. We're gonna step on the brake pedal. You probably can't see this, but the reason we step on the brake pedal is to is to bring the piston out inside the caliper. Because if you go to drive away and that piston doesn't have any clearance, it only moves just a hair every time you hit the pedal. It doesn't move very far. Because the piston area is so large compared to the master cylinder area. It's Pascal's law. So, oh dear. That's how we do that's how we do brakes on a on a CRV. All you have to do is just throw your wheel back on. So, let me take the safety glasses off. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. Uh, I, any requests, I can only really do what comes in here, but I enjoy doing it. So, when I get a day off, I'll, I'll be happy to happy to do a little bit more. So, shout any requests out and uh, take it take it easy. Everybody, have a good day.